Well, Australia's annual wage growth remained elevated last quarter. That underscored a tight labour market and persistently weak productivity. And it does suggest that inflationary pressures will take time to cool. And that'll be a challenge for policymakers like the Reserve Bank because it means an interest rate cut in the near term remains unlikely. Now, in addition, wages growth is nowhere near enough to make up for the huge decline in real wages over the past five years, as overall real wages are still languishing near 2011 levels. There's a good article in the conversation that gets to the heart of the issue. Labour costs aren't directly included in the CPI, but the Reserve Bank does keep a close eye on wage growth because higher wages can lead to higher costs for employers and therefore create inflation. But productivity growth, the continued improvement in our ability to produce more output from the same inputs, reduces labour costs relative to the amount of income a business can generate. Now, here's a chart that shows over the past three decades, labour costs have fallen because productivity growth has been stronger than wages growth. The uptick in labour costs since 2023 shows that wages growth has been stronger than productivity growth for the past two years. Actually, if you account for inflation, Australians' wages have roughly have the same purchasing power now as they did back in 2011. The post-COVID decline in real wages is by far the largest in recent history, but it's not the only one. In the year 2000, when the goods and services tax was introduced in Australia, a jump of almost 4% in the CPI led to a steep dip in real wages, which took about four years to unwind. And a horror stretch starting in 2020 saw an entire decade of real wage growth reversed in just three years. So today's results consolidates a cautious return to real wages growth, but we will need to wait until the gross domestic product figures comes out next month to see whether the growth is supported by productivity gains. And while workers will welcome growth in real wages, we must be careful about what we wish for. When wages growth is not supported by productivity growth, employers will often reduce costs by laying off workers. So until productivity improves, this long grind of real income erosion is likely to continue ahead, despite the government spin and the use of taxpayer funds to try to prop things up. 